Welcome to another ComBase tutorial. This video is about donating data to ComBase, especially about how to format your data. ComBase is the world's largest freely accessible database that describes how microorganisms respond to diverse food environments. Although ComBase contains many useful predictive models, it is the data that makes ComBase a highly useful resource to the food safety community. And it is this that allows scientists to share their data with others and also to develop and validate new predictive models. Consequently, the ComBase initiative relies on persons like you who wish to donate data and make ComBase an even more useful resource to the global food safety community. Several steps are involved before your data can be published in ComBase. The first step, and the most important, is for persons like you to contact us about donating your data. The second step is for the ComBase team to work with you to develop a spreadsheet that properly formats and describes your data. When this is completed, you approve your data before it is deposited into ComBase. This also ensures that there are no restrictions for ComBase to include your data. When you first contact us, let us know if you want your data to be deposited into the public section or if you want the data to be deposited into the private section of ComBase. For example, you may want to deposit your data in the private section in advance of a journal article being published. This gives you an advanced opportunity to indicate in your manuscript that your data will be published in ComBase, including the record codes and or the source name so that people can more easily find your data in ComBase. Once your data has been accepted, we can then move your data to the public section if you wish. Now, let's look at how to format your data. We have two Excel workbook files that you can download from the ComBase Donate Data section. One is called the Data Template and the other is the Data Sample. First, let's begin with the Data Template Workbook. There are four spreadsheets in this workbook. The Master Sheet, the Property Sheet, the Condition Sheet, and the Data Entry Sheet. First, let's examine the Master Sheet. There are 13 columns that collect information about your data. Column A identifies the source of your data. Usually this is a journal publication. However, in cases where your data will not be published, then ComBase indicates the data donor, the institution, and the address. Of course, ComBase always prefers to publish data that have been published in peer-reviewed journals. Column B shows the species of microorganism, usually bacteria or fungi. Column C has more specific details about the species. This can include the strain's name, a serotype, a group, and or where the species was originally isolated, if known. You may have some or none of this information. Column D describes additional details about the microorganism and how it was treated before it was inoculated into the sample. To see examples of these characteristics, let's take a look at the property sheet. You can see that this may include the phase of growth before the organism was added to the sample, 
Maybe the bacterium was pretreated with heat or with radiation or with various acids. If one of these properties is not relevant to your experiment, then please type the condition into the sheet at the bottom. Now let's go back to the master sheet. Column E refers to the experimental matrix, such as microbiological broth or a specific food that the organism was added to. Column F indicates information about the matrix environment. To see examples of these characteristics, let's look at the condition sheet. You can see that there are many types of conditions, especially additives such as organic acids, preservatives, sugars, natural extracts, as well as atmosphere. If one of these conditions is not relevant to your experiment, just as you did for the property sheet, then please type the condition at the bottom of the sheet. Column G is where you enter your experimental protocol. If your study was or is to be published, then your paper will contain the specific details. Therefore, we only ask that you provide a brief description of the following criteria how the inoculum was prepared, how the sample was prepared, and a brief summary of the experimental procedure. Column H is the measurement method. This is the method that you use to measure the growth or death of, of the microorganism. This may include colony counts, such as colony forming units, or CFU, optical density, most probable number, membrane filtration count, microscopic count, electrical impedance, or some other enumeration method not listed here. Column I is where you indicate the temperature or temperatures that were used in the study. For example, your experiment may have been conducted at a single temperature, or you may have recorded a temperature profile during the experiment. That is, the temperature was not static, but instead changed over time. We refer to this as a dynamic temperature profile. Column J indicates the pH or pHs used in the study. For example, your experiment may have been conducted at a single pH, or you may have recorded a pH profile throughout the experiment. An example of this would be for a fermented food, where pH changes during the fermentation process. However, you may not have measured pH, and if so, then leave this blank. Column K shows the water activity, or the sodium chloride concentration, that was used in the study. Your experiment may have been conducted at a single water activity, or you may have recorded a water activity throughout the experiment. An example of this could be when foods are dried, or when foods are fermented. However, you may not have measured water activity, and if so, then leave this blank.